Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Astrological Intentions. I am your host, Alex Reevy, along with the studious stargazer herself, Sandy Reevy. Hi, Alex. I love our podcasts. I love doing this. I love preparing for them and recording them. Yes, it is episode 135, February 22nd. Happy Monday, everybody. Let's get right into it. In the transits, we have Wednesday, February 24th, Mars trine Pluto. Engage all systems. Thursday, February 25th, Venus ingress Pisces. In exaltation. Thursday, February 25th, Sun sextile Uranus. Tap into your senses. And Saturday, February 27th, the full moon in Virgo. Shine the light. Then for talisman time, Sandy has finished up two to refine my spirit and to benefit by the stillness. Then one special upcoming to obtain a publisher for all you authors out there. Then we have on the horizon, our March forecast coming up along with our March cheat sheet available now, our seven day intention challenge invite only as well as our summer solstice constellation bracelet and workshop. Then in our house, Sandy and I are going to bring in a client, Tessa, to share the incredible six month journey it took for her personal talismans to finally get on their way. This is the story of using teamwork versus the blame game to get things done. So stay tuned for this episode of Astrological Intentions. And the search ends here where the night is totally clear and your heart is fierce and so you finally know you control where you go hello studious stargazer Uh, What does that mean? Let me think, because I love studying the stars. It's true. It's true. We really do. We've been, I've, I've set up the telescope so that I can see the, the, you know, the West. So as planets and the moon and anything was setting, um, and it's been so overcast here. I haven't been able to use it much on the fourth floor, but I do miss it. But I, I, I got my head in books. You do. (laughs) You totally do. Um, So I wanted to go direct to you all. Thank you, everybody, for listening to our podcast, reviewing us, sending your emails, um, you know, and and just really engaging with us. So I wanted to share a message from Sharon Hood. Um, She sent us an email and then in the bottom, she says, P.S. Just want to just want to add how much I love big heart heart emoji. How much I love listening to your podcast. You and your mom are so sweet and wonderful at explaining astrology. So thank you, Sharon, so much. It's so wonderful to hear these loved words. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also want to bring up um, a very special thought right now. Can I? I'd like to talk about Dr. Laura Berman. Um, Some of you have been sending me messages to send to her. I have gotten those to her. Dr. Laura Berman is the sex therapist, the relationship expert um, that I was working with for, gosh, a year and a half on her monthly, well, she does a radio, used to do a radio show called An Uncovered Radio Mm -hmm. uh, every day. And I was a guest, uh, the the guest astrologer once a month, questions and I do charts. And I just have to say, among, um, along with other people, that our heart goes out to Dr. Laura Berman and her husband and her two children. She lost her son, her youngest son, Sammy, a couple of weeks ago at a um, accidental overdose. Um, and she has been, she has pivoted um, temporarily or permanently, don't know about really getting the message out there about social media and young children. Uh, right, and was, she's really transformed into this huge advocate of, of really trying to teach parents that, you know, the internet, as wonderful as it is for kids, it also can be a, a 
a bad place that they're they're not safe and that was that was the way that her son was able to access those drugs um even with quarantine and things like that you know so she was she's really stepping into that space courageously yeah. and coming into the home right under the nose of you know parents or the superiors and Anyway, I, I reach out to her often um, and check in on her and said, you know, is there anything I can do? And she will be back on our podcast. She was on our podcast in a intention interview some, um, gosh, year ago, year right. and a half ago. Uh, but she's offered to come back. Uh, she's quite busy right now. She's overwhelmed, obviously, and I'm trying to put things into order and, uh, wants to come on our podcast. So yeah. that's, that'll be in the future. And, and of course, if, if she's listening or, um, any of you want to send your love, um, our hearts go out to Dr. Laura and her family. Um, it's an unsurmountable time and, um, we're here to support and we're here to, you know, help share this message. So, um, of course, head over to Dr. Laura Berman's social media. She's she's speaking up a lot about, you know, her experience um, in this mess. So let's, shall we move into the transits? Okay. I love you, Laura. Yes, we do. Um, so in the transits, we have um, not too many transits going on this week. However, you're going to break it all down for us, I hope. Um, so Wednesday, February 24th, Mars trine Pluto. This is a trine. So these are the two power forces are now getting along. And how are you getting along? This is engage all systems. And this, this, these two planets were square for four months from August of 2020. So this is just totally recently. Um, August 2020 through December 23rd of 2020, these two planets were square. And that was this four months of resolving issues of trying to keep the power intact. So the squares are way harder to do. That's that frustration, that conflict with the two power forces. And now there, Mars has moved into a position. Mars is, has moved into the fixed place of Taurus. Uh, Earth and Pluto, you know, which doesn't move very much at all, just a few degrees a year, is also in that uh, Capricorn Earth place. So Earth to Earth are always trines. And so it's like, you know, this is like a time to, and we're only going to get one pass of this. Mars does not go retrograde and cross into this placement. So it's, to, you know, the Wednesday, the 24th of February. So check in to one last time, check your power source. Are you on full charge? You know, I'm sure the Texans that are listening or this, you know, the Southern states, it's like making sure everything in their house, they've got a new perception on what it means to have a power source, right? right. So make sure you're on full charge here. And Thursday, and February 20th, oops, sorry. And I don't mean, sorry. And I don't mean just the electrical connection, right? I'm talking about engaging all of your internal systems. Yes. Okay. And Thursday, February 25th, Venus Ingress Pisces. Oh, we like this one. I love this one. I'm going to be getting a lot of uh, talismans done at this point. Uh, this happens at 7 11 a.m. And she moves into her exaltation. So she moves out of Aquarius and moves into the next sign of Pisces. Happy and flowing. She stays here until March 22nd. Um, and then she moves into Aries where she's in her detriment. So this whole time period, it's, it's almost a month. Um, it's just a really nice, Oh, ease and flow. I'm reminded, Alex, of a static dance party in Bali <laughs> and where I'm got to, can we put that video up on the uh, notes? I've got to uh, find that, but if I, if I can, I absolutely will. Because it's about being sweaty and loud and invigorating and moving with the flow. And there's, 
we're outdoors in Bali and music's playing and thumping and everybody's just dancing around this floor. And it's at like 10 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And, you know, it, it just reminds me of. It's like an enchantment or like entrancement, it, it, mm-hmm. especially, you know, when you're in a magical place like Bali and you're in this kind of like tree house and there's lots of people the music is beautiful and and the there's one rule on the dance floor in Bali is that you can't talk because that is it's and you'll you'll notice that when people start getting like a little bit uncomfortable with like their dance moves or like you know their expression they'll be like oh my gosh like how much fun are you having or they'll you know try to bring into this like more like headspace as opposed to really flowing with it within your body. Um, so I recommend throwing up some like dance music, closing your eyes or, you know, doing whatever you need to do just to really drop in to that space because it is invigorating, empowering, it's exciting and it's fun. I mean, we had, you know, we were at the yoga barn, everybody that knows about the yoga barn Um, in Bali and we were there with um, the DJ Taz DJ Taz who's our who's our buddy Um, and we brought our whole group there and some people were on the outside looking in going yeah no uh, that looks too (laughs) weirdo for me and then and some of us are in there going like like that we weren't singing but it was it was you know no voice uh, singing music. Um, anyway, just incredibly vigorating. Yes. All right, I move on. Um, the same day, Thursday, February 25th, sun sextile Uranus. Tap into your senses. This is at 3 13 PM and reach into that space beyond what you know or see. And maybe you're still dancing from earlier in the morning right? Tapping into the senses, getting through that uncomfortable spot of, oh, I, my arms are going this way. And that probably looks funny, but who cares? Yes. That is, that is the question. Who cares? The only person that really truly cares is you (laughs) because probably (laughs) people are like, I love the way they're dancing. Look at those, look at the way she moves her arms. You know, static dancing is mostly with your eyes closed or up in the air. I mean, me. (laughs) Yeah, well, it is. It's really just going into a place of not caring, not trying to choreograph um, and just simply expressing however your body feels. And once you can listen in, dance is so easy and it's fluid. And it's and as soon as those thoughts pop up like a meditation, you enact them with your body. So it's it's cool. It's fun. Um, so Saturday, February 27th, we have the full moon in Virgo coming. It is. That means the sun is at nine degrees of Pisces and the moon is opposite at nine degrees of Virgo. So this also has the moon is in a, a trine to Uranus. But it, that would mean that the sun is sextile to Uranus. So this is at 2.17 a.m. on Saturday. And shine the light. Be practical. Be organized. You know, that part of your life or your chart that you choose or that is in, you know, um, always full moons do shine the light onto the emotional side, maybe the home side, maybe the private side the personal side. So and it's a really great time to really to use that light to investigate and to appreciate what is in front of us, what, it, what we have created. Um, and, and also if it's, if it's something that we're not proud of taking a look at it, being brave enough to shine the light there. And with that Uranus there in a, it's in a sextile to the sun, which is nice and in trying to the moon. So that's nice. So there's this feeling of newness. You know, Uranus is the planet of awakening, of Mm -hmm. of um, spontaneity and change, Mm -hmm. um, freedom. So it's 
about looking at all the ways that you've done things and your organization, and maybe there's something, maybe you're too stuck on some old things that by shining the light saying, what is important anymore? Eh, meh, meh, that's not so important. Let's, yeah. bring, let's bring something new in. Let's get rid of this and do something new. Right. And just as a quick reminder to all of our new listeners, our dates and times are in central time since we are recording here from Chicago. And if you are a new listener, thank you so much for yeah. seeing us, for listening in. Um, of course, we want to hear from you. So make sure to email me, alex at intentiondeeds.com. Talisman times. Let's move into talisman times. You finished up two talismans. One was Saturday, February 20th to refine my spirit. As I turn the corner, I immediately sense the change in atmosphere. Bo boy, oh boy, the shift of breeze lifts me up from the place where I had been. Empowerment is how I describe it. This was, this was pre-sold. So I contacted the person that purchased. She got to pick the, the, the size beads, the color of the beads. I gave her the time. We, we did the countdown and she knew I was in and sent, I sent her a picture of them when they were going through their summification. And so this is um, heading on its way. And this was really when the mercury was stationing retrograde or stationing direct from its retrograde and mercury was eight days standing still and Jupiter was sitting at the midheaven, and it was all in the second decan of Aquarius, which really is about transformation and coming into a, um, a goodness um, and finding that symbolically that Mercury is moving from the going the, going the backwards is now pivoting and moving to the forward. Mm -hmm. So that's where I had to use that that the, those words of, as I turn the corner, you know, a shift right. of breeze lifts me up from the place where I had been because now I'm moving in the right direction. And, and I, I love, I love that the narration that you give with, within that affirmation, I think it's, it kind of seems like you're, you're speaking from a biography of some sort mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's powerful. I like that. Um, Sunday, February 21st to, def to benefit by the stillness. I stay in this process. By me pausing, I collect all the details and discoveries that is needed to see the beautiful results coming into view. This is also, you know, that, that eight day stillness of the Mercury stationing direct. And now in this position, the Mercury is um, moving toward Jupiter and we have this, the sun and Venus um, at the top of the chart and the moon making an, a really nice trying aspect to, the, to, to Venus. So um, yeah, just to, to benefit by the stillness. I love, yeah, I love that. Because when, mean, Mercury, when Mercury is making its pivot to move either backwards or forward, and the best is when he's been retrograde and move any planet, when it's moving in its stationing direct, uh, motion is the best place to go grab something, not when it's returning direct, in my opinion, unless we're going to use that energy and, and put that in the affirmation or in the intention, uh, because we have to align, you know, every time I write an affirmation and an intention, it has to equate to the energy that's, uh, is actually happening in the sky. So that's why this one is to, you know, stay in the process to pause to find the details and discoveries in the stillness mm -hmm. because they're coming, they're about to come into view. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I feel like all of my creative friends, they take time to have stillness because that is that blank slate that we can then plant a seed. We can kind of create, you know, create that vision. So when we can settle down, close our eyes, really be within that stillness. I feel like it's a, it's a blank slate, mm -hmm. it's a blank canvas. So the upcoming talisman that you have is Friday, February 26th to obtain a publisher. This one's going to be cool. I, this is the first time I've ever done anything to obtain a publisher. And here's why 
I am successful with my words, my connections, and my, ne my negotiations. I attract the perfect editor and publishing house to move my work into the world. Now, Regulus is involved here. The moon is sitting right on Regulus at the bottom of the chart, pushing up into the top of the chart. The mid heaven is the place of recognition, the place of out into the world, the public view. Mm -hmm. And we've got Mercury, Jupiter, the mid heaven, Venus in the sun, all in there. And the moon is reflect reflecting the Regulus. And really Regulus is the, the one of the watchers of the sky and it's a, a Persian royal star, one of the four, and it gives success. Is um, it the lion? Is that the lion? It's, yeah. Yeah, it's the heart of the lion, Regulus, is that right there at the fixed star. So it brings royalty, it brings, obtains uh, nobility, right? Um, I must say that Regulus, as all the four royal Persian, have a nemesis. And um, the nemesis of Regulus is vengeance, mm. revenge. Should one be revengeful or vengeful, um, it is the fall. But I'm thinking everybody here listening, anybody that's wearing a talisman has that piece handled or has uh, passed that up and left that alongside the, the highway. Right. Yeah, if if you're interested at this one, I'm only going to make one because I have to get the moon at Regulus on a uh, on an angle, so that I'm only going to be able to make one here. So you know, I I I say that out loud because you know my pre-sales have been selling, right? And you get to you get to be involved in it, and uh, I think that's very cool. Yeah. All right. So. so we also have the orbit of the month still available for this month is the I am mentally alert. Remember, it is an automatic discount. You get $5 off of this, which will cover your shipping. Um, and also the moon phase rings are back in stock. We have new ring sizes. So go ahead and click any of those links in the description. So let's move into and on the horizon. We have our CWS webinar download ready and waiting for you. This is the Saturn square Uranus where Sandy and Susan came together to really discuss a lot of what's happening financially in historical um, transit, similar to the Saturn square Mars, or excuse me, Saturn square Uranus. I thought it was really interesting information. I've, I think along with many other people have been very intrigued by the stock market ever since this, you know, Robin Hood GameStop type of thing that's been going on um, and the rise of Bitcoin. So it's, it's, it's a big topic. Um, and even though this crypto market is so new, we assume that it'll, it'll manage some way similar to the stock market, which Susan Goodell is a whiz at, and she's been analyzing those stock markets along with astrology in her book and for her career. So download, check it out. Um, and we'll move on to February 27th, where this week we have our March forecast happening on Facebook Live. Everyone is invited. We would love to have you and we would love to see you. Um, you can ask questions there. You can really engage with Sandy and Susan. So um, meet us there, RSVP, make sure that you're following us on Facebook to get those updates, as well as um, the March cheat sheet is now available. I have the download link here in the description, and it also is on the website. We'll move into April, April 10th through the 16th. We have our invite only seven day intention challenge. The way that you get the invite is if you have purchased a universal or personal talisman. And this is a way for us to come together and re-engage, re reactivate our intention bracelets. So do you have anything to say about? We started it for the first time in January because we were not doing our, our international retreat to Mexico. 
And I was like, I have to get a tribe. I need a tribe. <laughs> Alex, let's get a tribe together. You know, I really wasn't interested in trying to figure out how to do a retreat online. And so I came up with this, you know, seven day intention challenge, which ended up being eight days. We did a bonus day in there and everybody was so <laughs> And it was just like, I don't know really what we're going to do, except that everybody's going to hold their, their intention bracelet. They're going to grab their card that's in the box. They're going to set their intention. They're going to say their affirmation. They're going to say their gratitude for the day and to show up every day if they could at the, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, do some teaching. I'm like, okay, like what? And you're saying, talk, you know, teach about the talismans, teach about how you pick them, uh, how you what your meditation is, uh, how you light incense and uh, how you um, call in the, 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 the planets that you're working with, what colors are assigned. And it ended up being, you know, like a 10 to 15 minute teaching before we got into every, you know, we, we did have to get into breakout, uh, breakout rooms because we had so many people that had signed up. So I'm uh, anticipating this next group will be even bigger because everybody wants to come back. And, and that for me was everything plus more than I wanted to gain. It was so surprising. Oh. You're so right. I mean, and, and I think what really spoke beautifully to me about this event was not only um, all that goes into our talismans and I get excited when people get excited about what we do because we've been doing it for so long. But, you know, when, when you, when someone first sees something, you can share in that excitement as well. Um, but I think the key word for this was community mm -hmm. and our community had this opportunity to really bond. And I think that was a sacred, special place to meet. And let's just remember too that because this was a complimentary offering that you and I gave to anyone that who had purchased, uh, you know, the intention bracelet, universal or personal, which means it's the all clay, you know, it's the all clays uh, pieces, and you know this was just an extra uh, add-on that they have for their intention bracelet that they can. And we had people that I haven't seen in years, right? Literally hadn't uh, hadn't used their their talisman in the last few years, and just re-engaged with it here, and that just set and realized in the in some of those moments, you know, saying their intention, saying their affirmation, realizing, oh my gosh, it has it's working or it's already worked. I've already done this and I didn't recognize, I didn't realize it until I sat with other people here on the Zoom call and, and discussed loud. Right. Wow. It's like, okay, so I'm cool. on my next one. Um, and that happened. You know, we've got, we had a lot of people that are ready for their next one. Yep. And so we also have our summer solstice constellation bracelet and workshop happening starting in May. So we're announcing this early on because it is, it's a, we want to make sure that you hash out these dates, these times, and you have, you know, time to prepare because the Constellation Bracelet and Workshop is such a cool experience. And we're actually in our spring equinox sessions right now. And it's like, imagine the seven day intention challenge, but you get personalized astrology readings every single time and you're really building and creating a talisman within that space and um and with the same people and and they're invested and they're engaged and they're working on their things and you can cheer them on they cheer you on mm -hmm. and it is it's this, it's a wonderful sense of community but also a, a wonderful sense of awareness and purpose and we keep it to eight no more than yeah. eight people that come on to this this summer solstice uh, work uh, per, personal intention bracelet and workshop. <laughs> mouthful, but we want to let you know that it's a workshop. You, you get you get a book delivered to you. Um, there's right. times up. We there's an hour or hour and a half call I make with you personally in, in advance, and then you get an hour plus 
um, 12 of those every time we go into a time and then we do an activation at the end. So it ends up being really over probably 16 hours of, of, of you and the group and me involved with your chart and seeing how this sets up. I want to add something to this summer solstice because we're going to do the fall equinox and we're going to do the, the, the winter solstice. Now we didn't run that in 2020 because I got a very clear message in January that that wasn't happening, that um, I wasn't to run it in 2020 and we didn't know, we know why. Um, we, we, had, we did it in 2018, we did it in 2019. And so we're back on it. And this one, the summer solstice is going to hold the eclipses. It is our, our, our first eclipse season, which was is May and June. So it will encom encompass the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. Um, also, this summer solstice will include the Jupiter moving into Pisces for about the two month period, actually from um, May 18th through the end of July. So this is the one that will hold that energy. So, you know, we're announcing it early so that you can get your spot because um, this is such a cool one. I'm going to, can I read from the, the eclipse queen guru herself, Bernadette Brady, a book called yeah. uh, the Eagle and the Lark predictive astrology. And she writes about all the eclipses. Now we just have been through some difficult eclipse zero cycles in the last 18 months. Oh, am I telling you anything new? No. But what I do want to tell you something new is this next grouping we're getting into are excellent. They're, 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 I want to read from this book on what these eclipses are like. Um, the two that are coming in May and June, one's the lunar and one's the solar. This is what she writes. It's just a couple sentences. So hang in there. Um, <laughs> a very unusual zero series involving sudden flashes of ideas that seem to have a psychic or unconscious flavor to them. Hunches, visions, prophetic dreams are the essence of this family of eclipses. A truly creative series which should leave the individual enriched. The ideas or hunches which come from this eclipse can be acted upon. Woo woo, right? Woo woo. Yeah, so that's some of the energy that we're going to be pulling in during the summer solstice. And we've never really, and Alex, because you've got, we've got Crystal on board, right? You're, you're able to set things into motion because you have help. <laughs> Thank yes. God. Time. Um, uh, so you might be, everybody might be seeing things coming a little bit earlier than we used to because we have more hands on deck. True. So, I mean, while you were also talking, I, I just saw a notification flash across my screen and you'll never believe what just happened. I got a friend request from UPS. This is not a joke. I can't even believe this just happened because just wait until we get into our house because I have a story for you. Okay, so let's move into our house. We have a really special and so incredible story for you all. We're so excited. We're bringing on a wonderful client of ours, Tessa Heyman, and we'll set up this story. But first, I just want to say like, thank you, Tessa, so much for joining us and talking on the podcast. My pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> so mom, you're always so good at setting up stories. So you go ahead, set the, set the layout of this. Well, Tessa, we met Tessa through a big event that we did with Beth Davis and we were, were the sponsor for that. And Tessa was interested in the personal intention bracelet process. And she not only bought one, she not bought two, she bought three. And these were gifts for some of her, um, her friends. And, and so we did the process, you know, we set up the, the call we did our 
our, we, with all three of them separately. I found the time. I set all that up, you know, just like the personal intention bracelet. And I made the beads. They picked the colors, I made the beads. They were in the meditation at the time. And now we go and take it to UPS, which, you know, we ship all around the world all the time. Um, we were shipping out every day somewhere and it got stuck. It got stuck. It got delayed. And then Alex, you kind of took it on. Right. So Tessa and I, I think we have a email thread that is the longest email thread I think I've ever had. <laughs> and um, this all started when it was, it was way before the holiday season. We, um, Tessa, talk a little bit about like, you know, getting on with these personal intention bracelets, the process that it like that it took, give us a short little synopsis of that. Well, the, like we, we did, it, we started the calls at the end of August and we were finished them by the middle of September. Cause there were three of us. So we, we had to look at the timings and things. Um, and so the beads were finished and I think they went out the first week of October. <clears throat> and the they funny did. thing is my business partner and I, like she had also ordered three bracelets from you guys and we had kind of done them on the same order, but we had to do separate shipping. She would get three and I would get three. And like a week and a half later after hers had finished and her finished, you shipped them up around the same time. She got her bracelets <laughs> for her and her daughters. And I was like, okay, I'm like, well, mine must be coming shortly. You know, you've just got yours. I think, she, I think you shipped, them, shipped hers out actually like a couple days after mine. I did. And hers. I was like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, so mine are going to be around the corner, around the corner. So the, the, the end of October rolls along and I'm like, I still haven't received these bracelets. So I go online, you had sent me the shipping details and I was looking and it's like, oh, it's stuck somewhere in Illinois. I think it was. And, Which is and, where we sent it from. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's at the facility. They've received it. You know, it's, you know, it's hot. You know, there were a lot of packages going out. I was hearing all over the place, the companies that I was ordering things from, that there were shipping delays. I was like, oh, it just must be a shipping delay, you know? Middle of November rolls along though, and it hasn't moved. I go and check. I'm like, I still haven't received this package. And at that point, I'm like, okay, this has been like a month. I'm like, I can understand a delay, but the fact that it hasn't moved from the same place in a month, something's going on. So I messaged you and I'm like, and I, I had called them first. I called UPS first and I said, listen, my package has been stuck in the same spot. What's going on? They're like, oh, we've had a lot of delays. We'll look into it. You know, it, it looks like it's going out uh, tomorrow. You, you should have it by next week. And I was like, okay. So then, you know what? I waited. I waited another week and I still <laughs> didn't get the package. So I was like, okay, I'm going to call Alex and see if she can reach out from her end because sometimes they, the person who, the sender, you know, mm -hmm. has a little bit more ability. And then I kind of like, Passed it off to you. I was like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> no, I thought at that point, like it was like insurance going to take over or something. I mean, at that point, I, I, I had this, and you and I, we've discussed since then about this whole rigmarole. But um, I, we just had a faith that it was, it was on its way, that it was going to arrive to you safely, and there was not going to be an issue. Um, you know. Thanksgiving rolled by, then we're getting closer up to the Christmas holiday. And so we're also shipping out lots and lots of Christmas presents and all of these like holiday shipments. And I'm, meanwhile, I'm ma making sure that every one of our clients knows like, Hey, listen, once it's out of our hands, like the, it, the shipping is kind of crazy right now. Um, and we kept every single time that you and I discussed Tessa, you were like, well, at least it's going to get here for Thanksgiving. And then, you know, Thanksgiving rolls by and we're like, uh-oh. And then you're like, well, at least it's going to be here for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and then like Christmas was coming up way too soon. And we're like, where is, what is going on? This was, this was sent back in October. So anyway, it had been months and I started getting kind of angry with, with what was going on with UPS. And I was calling and I was talking to... I have a list of at least I at least eight names that I wrote down and I don't always write them in the same place, but I have eight names with their employee numbers. So I have this whole entire list. I'm going through 
supervisor and supervisor and department and department. And, and this wasn't only just an individual call. This was weekly calls that I had made to UPS. I had been receiving promises that it was going to be shipped the next day or the next week. And every single time it was, it, I was just getting disappointed with, you know, having to email you being like, oh yeah, great news. They're going to ship out tomorrow. And then rewind and say, oh my gosh, Tessa, I have no idea what's going on. They promised me all of this, but it's not happening. So six months, six months of this craziness of calling and requesting and demanding and, you know, threatening almost where, I mean, I was going on Twitter. I was on Facebook. I was trying to get them at whatever angle I possibly could. And at this point, I was starting to tell them, hey, I'm going to my I'm going to my local news. I don't know how else to get this package back. I I knew where this warehouse was, where it was at, but there was no phone number listed. I couldn't find anything. Finally, um, Tessa, you know, for the Christmas, we wanted to we wanted to send you a Christmas present. So you had some sort of talisman <laughs> for the holidays. And and you know, finally it's now February. And I'm now, okay, we have to have an alternative plan here. We need to recreate all of these bracelets. We need to have these conversations again. Um, and I need to start calling UPS and just saying, hey, listen, we need, <laughs> we need this to just be refunded. And so finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to have one last push, one last push. I research and research and call and call and finally get the personal the direct cell phone number of the manager of this cash place, this catch place of UPS. And it's a big hub and there's no phone numbers and there's no customer service there because all they're meant to do is just sort and ship. Finally, I, I, I talk to this man and I, I tell him what's been going on. He warms up to the phone call after a while and promises that, okay, we're going to get this figured out. They find the package. It was on the floor for six months. And here we are. I got the, I received the package back finally. Both my mom and I are so ecstatic because we had been waiting, Tessa, to tell you whether or not it was actually going to arrive because I was so tired of disappointing you. And it finally arrived. We had a bottle of champagne ready and <laughs> waiting for this moment. <laughs> And I mean, because this is unheard of, six months is in an entirety when it comes to having something shipped. And um, I just, the whole time, I couldn't, I couldn't have appreciated your patience, your positivity, your understanding. You have this like unlimited well of <laughs> positivity and un understanding, Tessa. So thank you. <laughs> You know what was feeding that well? It was the sheer amount of gratitude that it wasn't me having to do all the calls and hunt it down. I was like, you know, one way or another, I'm going to get my bracelets. You know, if we have to redo them, you know, it's going to kind of, uh, but you know what? Well, we do them. It's not the end of the world, you know? Right. But I'm like, the fact that you kept going at them, I was like, this woman is a power to be reckoned with. Like, there's, there's no way we cannot succeed and I was just happy I was like it's not me sitting on the phone with those agents getting frustrated it's not me having to make that phone call I was just so happy when you took it on I was like yes <laughs> even when you got the update and you're like oh Tessa it's gonna they said this gonna ship I'm like I have dealt with <laughs> numerous shipping carriers and had lots of glitches over a period of my lifetime so it's like, this is, it's going to resolve itself. You know, sometimes you just have to have faith. Mm -hmm. It was really it. interesting for me as I watched, Alex would say, okay, I'm done with my, 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 you know, my morning catch up. So I'm now going to get on the phone with UPS. I'm like, oh my God, here goes another two hours into the abyss. And she would get, yeah, we're going to call you back this afternoon. They never call her back. They sometimes call me. And if I'm in a reading and I get this like, you know, spam likely, I'm not going to answer it. And then would leave me a message on my phone. So it was just this co complete 
confusion. And then Alex would say, okay, I'm going to hop back on the phone with UPS. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know where you're getting this, this ability to, to sit in and repeat the story 36 times over and over again. And then you too, Tess. So just being like, no, no, you know, oh, okay. What, a, you know, like your, like your patience and Alex's, you know, determination, you really did just push this out and it went boop, like a little geyser and it showed up. So it's on its way to you right now. And we, you know, Alex painstakingly repackaged it, made sure everything looks clear. Cause the guy, the postman shows up here. Well, not the postman, but the um, UPS guy. And he rings the doorbell and he goes, um, I'm just really confused. I thought it, I thought it said September on the package. <laughs> He's like, this has been around for a while. Is this right? I'm like, yes, give it to me right now. Um, so anyway, he was even a very, very, very apologetic um, in it. But, you know, unfortunately we did not use that shipper as it's uh, on its, on its last move to you. So um, maybe right. we on probably the reason why you won't be seeing UPS on our website as an option right now. Well, that's we have a vendetta. And how crazy is this? It came back to us on the day that Perseverance put down that uh land rover on Mars. The rover onto Mars is the day it came through. And it was just like one of our cheers uh with this, our champagne glasses was, you know, Alex becomes the perseverance that landed and dropped off this roving package onto its, um, what was that like? A, in fact, it, there no was a destination, like, but there was a scary part where it had to go, the rover left its, its confines and it had to go through like a seven minute, which we could liken to a seven month period <laughs> where they didn't know where it was. And if it had detached the parachutes correctly so it could land softly and not at, you know, thousands and thousands of miles per hour. So anyway, just the whole combination of that was like, you two rocked it. So. And Tess, I also want to hear a little bit about, you know, your intention and what was going on with that. And was it okay that you didn't have your talisman in your hands? Well, my intention was essentially being true to myself so that I can help others be true to themselves. Um, and, you know, I, patience is a virtue. I've always, I, I'm, I'm a very hyper person. I've got ADHD too. And so patience is always something I've needed to cultivate. And I've always been like, nope, I got to practice patience. This is helping me to cultivate patience. You know, and just kind of taking that kind of attitude. But it, it's very interesting with the whole Mars thing, because Mars and my son are like super, super close together in my chart. And the fact that you were telling me when you got on, when we got on the call that, you know, there was this Mars energy. I'm like, oh, maybe that makes sense because, you know, Mars is like a, I don't know, a catalyst it seems to be for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, you know, it's just kind of, everything kind of works out the way it's meant to be. And, you know, if you don't resist it, you get to flow with it. So that, that was, that was the thing for me. And I was just super, I was so impressed with you, honestly. I was like, I'm like you hunted down the cell phone number of the man, the guy walking the floor. I'm like, I don't even, I don't even think I could do that. I'm like that is like, this girl has got to drive. I would, you know. Well, they opened up crazy. about, they opened up in, in the interim of the six months, they opened up, um, I think five or six different cases and some of those cases were investigation cases and so my biggest question to the to the agents and the managers and every supervisors who is investigating and do they care about investigating because I'm going to start doing my own investigation and see what I can find out and that's exactly it that's exactly what I do you so, are you know you you always have a opportunity in the world of PI <laughs> Right. You know, I'm just looking at some of the notes, Tessa, and it's just so cool. One of the things you had said in our, do you mind if I share this one phrase? No, go ahead. Go ahead. You said, I bring, I change the lever on my own track. Hmm. 
And, and that was just one of the notes I had taken that just kind of hit me right here. And that kind of is like, do things take their time, right? Things aren't immediate gratification. That there is, it is worth, worth a wait or a patience that things don't happen overnight. Coins don't get flipped. Stories don't have, you know, just find their ending. Yeah. The opposite side overnight. So um, anyway, I just, I, 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 I just thank both of you for one pushing so far, so, so hard and the other one allowing that push to occur. Right. So neither you weren't butting heads. Alex and, was, and she was so were, understanding about it, that it, that, that made me under that, that helped me, you know, that instigated me to say, no, she needs this. Her tail has been here. We are doing this for Tessa. She is patient. She is good. We're, we're getting this to her. <laughs> so, so does it like really, truly like we, as soon as I, you know, sent you the, the picture of the torn up package and all of that, um, you called me right away and you said, I think this deserves a phone call. And I said, absolutely, you're right. And we giggled and we laughed on the phone together. Like, oh my gosh, it was like a victory lap for you and I, because <laughs> wow, my goodness, the next victory lap is coming soon. The shipment is on its way to you. I just actually checked it and it says February 24th, it's going to be arriving, which is going to be this week during this podcast. So I'm so excited. Um, I yeah. would Go ahead. One last thing, you know, Mercury is now today, well, late last night, um, moving forward, you know, it's starting to, it's pivoted and it's starting to move forward. So anyway, just really interesting. Oh, that was a funny thing too, though, because that you're absolutely right. I was born in a Mercury retrograde and yeah, the yeah. bracelets were shipped in a Mercury, Mercury retrograde. So it kind of makes sense that it didn't come available to us back until another Mercury, Mercury retrograde had happened. Right. So I know it's like the whole the whole system cycle. Yeah. It's and just, you know, it's meant to be. And what mm -hmm. I think is really cool, and Sandy, mom, this is what you say a lot is, you know, once once you commit to your talisman, once you commit to like that, there is something that I want to really focus on here the process begins there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even whatever happens after that, even <laughs> if it takes six months for this talisman to get to your doorstep, that process begins. It's already begun and it's, it's happening and it's here. And even in the frustration, even in that, in that impatient time frame, you know, there's always those lessons that we can learn. And I, I love, I love those reminders sometimes, I think. <laughs> Well, so, well said, well said, bravo. Anyway, so, um, just thank you, Tessa, for a lot, letting Alex, giving Alex the space to move forward where you weren't pushing up against her, right? In your frustration as well, where you guys would have met here in the center and butted heads. You gave her that area for her to have more power. And we totally worked as a team. Because we both were like, I can't even believe this. What's going on? They're lying to us. <laughs> and, and, you know, I have a background in customer service, be, like not even just being a nurse, you know, that's got its own kind of customer service, so to speak. But I was actually a customer service rep on the phone for a phone company. And mm -hmm. I, I did, I did out customer outreach. So I know from my own experience that when somebody's yelling at me on the phone or sending nasty emails because they're upset or they're frustrated or they're experiencing all these negative emotions, as the agent, it doesn't make you want to help them more. <laughs> it doesn't make you want to be closer to them, right? So, you know, even though sometimes I'm frustrated, you know, when I'm on the phone, it's never that person's fault. They're just one little cog in the wheel of things, right? You know, they're not, there's no point in me unleashing myself on them right you know, I've got to do my own emotional support and just be as decent as I can and understand sometimes these things happen sometimes right. they happen for a reason you know maybe these bracelets needed to charge up in your in your possession because you still you transfer the ownership of the bracelet so to speak on a call right. when we get them right, right. Mm -hmm. so all this time it's been charging so to speak within your 
yeah. your ownership. So maybe it needed that, like a battery <laughs> to charge up before we get them. I don't know. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's beautiful and it's going to be so much more appreciated. It's got this fantastic story to go fantastic with bracelets story. now. And, you know, it couldn't have turned out better. I, I you know, I think it's, you know, for all it is, it's, it's been, been an interesting and fun experience now. Yeah. Yes. Well, Tessa, I mean, like we, we love your attitude. We love, um, your understanding and, and thank you again for coming on the podcast and to talk about this, the terrible six months of waiting, but turned out to be a really awesome ending of a story and your talismans are on their way. (laughs) So excited. (laughs) So, yeah. And we, we'd love to, um, to bring you back on to the podcast one day and do an astrological interview with you and talk more about what it is that you do up in Canada in Hamilton, Ontario. And, um, yeah. So until then, I'm ready for that. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for joining. All right. I'll see you and the crew on a activation call. Um, and there's instructions inside the box on how to set up that call. So I'll see you there. Well, I'm going to bring us out. Thank you, everybody, for listening into this podcast. I hope you enjoyed this story. Um, remember, subscribe and rate us on iTunes. We love those five star ones. And we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye, everybody. And the search ends here. Where the night